Hey folks, Dr. Joe here. A question I get very often, in fact, pretty much, I would say every day, every hour probably, is, Dr. Joe, I want to make a, the transition to eating better. I want to make the transition to a, a good lifestyle. And not just eating right, but exercising, sleeping right, making sure your spine and nervous system working properly, making sure your digestive system is working properly, keeping the immune system normalized. So people say to me, how do I make the transition? So we're going to talk today about how do you actually transition from where you are now to this new lifestyle. And it's not hard. It's extremely easy. And I've had people, some people just go, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it right away, Dr. Joe. Whatever you say, I'm, I'm on board and, and you're the man and we're going to make it happen. Other folks, eh, a little more resistant sometimes. They'll fight me. They'll argue, oh, I can't give up my sugar. I can't give up my meats. I can't give up my dairy products. And I said, I'm not asking you to do that right away. Let's see if we can take little baby steps and see what happens. And this is what's going to happen. I've been doing this for a long time. People say, all right, fine, I'll do this. I'll make a baby step. I'll give up my artificial sweetener because that's always step number one. And I give up the artificial sweetener and inevitably they say, you know, I feel so much better. I don't have headaches like I used to. Or maybe they'll say I have more energy or maybe they'll say I go to the bathroom better. Maybe they'll say I'm not as irritable as I used to be. I said, okay, so step number one, I was right. Yes, you were right. Okay. Let's go to step number two, and then we transition again, and we transition again. And as they go through it, these little tiny baby steps, if they can't do it all at once, they always say the same thing, and that is, why didn't I do this sooner? Why did I wait so long and suffer for so many years to realize that I feel better, I save money, I'm sleeping better, my energy improves, I'm losing weight, I'm more charming, I'm a better boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, sister, brother, churchgoer, coworker, whatever it is that you do, you probably have several titles there. And then they become annoying. Some of them do. Just like somebody who quits smoking whenever they see a smoker. You know how bad that is? You know how bad that is? And I was warning people. I said, be careful now. You know, other people aren't at your level yet, and that's okay. I'm not concerned about it. They'll get there if they want to. And if they don't, eh, what are you going to do? You take care of who you can. And I've learned after 33 years of practice that most of the people, major majority, will do what we tell them to. And they get usually great results. There's a few who fight us. And I say, okay, well, it's your choice. And just about every day in practice, after doing this for so many years, patients come in who hadn't been in in one week, two week, well, one year usually, two years, three years, five years, but even sometimes if they just skip a few visits in the beginning, and they say, wow, the problem came back. Just the other day, somebody came in, doc, I had dizziness, I was headaches, I had neck pain, I couldn't work, and I did great after a few visits. So what did I do? Stop coming in. I said, okay, go on, and I know how the story's going to end. And all those problems came back. And I said, well, you didn't finish the treatment for us to fix it. Okay, we'll do it this time. So it's easy to make the transition, whether you want to do it all at once or slowly, and the benefits are in sane. You will be blown away in most cases and you'll say, wow, this is crazy. And the thing that kind of sparked this this show, because every, every week I, I think about what can I do for my next show. Every day I think about that. And this was an interesting article that I found. And it said, millennial bowel cancer crisis. Young people are four times more likely to develop the disease than previous generations due to their terrible diets. Now, when I was young, we ate cake and we ate cookies and we ate hot dogs, but the food was different then. Boy, I sound like the old man, don't I? When I was your age and things were different, I'll tell you what, young youngster. And it was because we didn't have a lot of the steroids and hormones and chemicals and pesticides and herbicides and genetically modified foods and uh, glyphosate and, and uh, we, we were more active. I know I sound like the old man again, but <clears throat> we didn't have social media. So what did we do? We went out. We talked to people. We call for somebody. That was our thing. I'm going to call for Kurt. I'm going to call for uh, Tom, whatever. And you go knock on the door. Hey, Tom home? Yeah. We'll go out? Yeah. And then you go out and just hang out. But that hanging out was actually physical activity. Never. I, think I took the bus to school once. And it was about probably about a mile, mile and a half to, to school. And walked every day. Didn't matter. You know, snow, rain. Didn't, you had to go to school. You, you Back then, if you didn't have a fever and dying, you went to school. And so it was a different world. And the world today now is is horrible. I mean, we didn't get treats. You know, if we were good, maybe ice cream or something like that. But that was extremely rare because we were poor, too. That was another option that we didn't have the finances that many people have today. 
but accessibility, I guess. And so the kids are eating junk, not every day, but every meal. And it really scares the heck out of me because we're seeing things like bowel cancer on skyrocketing. We're seeing this generation is has the shortest lifespan, has a shorter life expectancy than their parents by five years. So if you have children or grandchildren, your children have a five year shorter life expectancy than you do. That's some scary stuff. So the stuff they're being exposed to, by the way, so are you. We had candy once a year, and that was on Valentine's Day in school. Now candy's given out like candy. So. Let's get back to this. Uh, unprecedented number of young people are being diagnosed with bowel cancer due to poor diets and lack of exercise this study is talking about. Now, the other thing that inspired me to do this is a friend of mine, I was at the dinner with my buddy Tim the other day, and he said, I said, what's new? I hadn't seen him in a couple of weeks. And he goes, I said, my cousin died. I said, really? He goes, yeah, he was having some problems, went in to get just get a regular checkup, and they found bowel cancer had eaten away at his bowels, and he's probably going to die within the next day or so. And sure enough, the next day he died. Now, guy was probably in his 40s or 50s, but still, many times cancer is, is, is the quiet killer. You don't know it's there until it suddenly you get tested and you go, oh my gosh, how did that get there? This is why I push so hard to you folks that 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. So you can have a pinched nerve or a malfunctioning nerve and not know it. High blood pressure, diabetes, cancer. So you need to take care of yourself before the diagnosis, not after. So millennials, these are people born between 1980 and 1995, are four times more likely to develop rectal tumors stemming from the large intestine compared to those born around 1950. That's before my time. An alarming three in 10 rectal cancer diagnoses are now in patients below the age of 55. That's one, th 33% are in, in, in younger people. Young people are also twice the risk of developing colon tumors, which start growing uh, lower down, which is down in, in the bowels. Study warns this data could be a warning sign that this generation faces an epidemic of digestive diseases. And it suggests we begin screening now in their early 20s rather than their 60s. That's a big difference in one generation. Now, I see a lot of people with digestive problems. I'm a chiropractor. I'm board certified in chiropractic, orthopedics, pain management, double board certified in nutrition, a BS in clinical nutrition, retired dietitian, award-winning author. This show is heard coast to coast and around the world. And I've been in practice, as I said, 33 years. And I missed a half a day of work in 33 years due to, I, I hit my head and I couldn't stand up straight. So my staff sent me home. So I've seen changes. I've seen things, young man. In 33 years, mainly chiropractic was all about back pain. You had back pain, go to chiropractor, get your adjustments, and you usually got great results. And now I'm seeing a heck of a lot more digestive problems. And in fact, if I could never adjust another patient again, which would be horrible, I love adjusting people, I could build an entire practice, multiple practices, on nothing but digestive problems. Number one reason we see patients pain, number two is digestive problems. Acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, colon impaction. Again, I didn't see these things when I first got in practice. And so if you have acid reflux or heartburn, many times the stomach is pushed up into the diaphragm and we need to gently pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm and actually adjust or manipulate the stomach and sometimes the intestines just to get it to relax. Your intestine and your stomach is, are muscles and muscles, if they spasm, need to relax. So you're seeing the trend in healthcare now going more toward physical medicine or physical treatments because so many problems are physical, not chemical. And we treat them chemically, and then you don't get the results you want. And this is something that I've known for years, and now it's finally making a uh, mainstream. So acid reflux is a pretty bad thing because the acid can get into your throat, erode your throat, can cause esophageal cancer. It can cause uh, chronic cough, sinus problems. It can affect the way you digest proteins, which affects how the brain works, anxiety, depression, ADD. I find are all somehow related to the digestive system. And fixing it is kind of important. So we're talking about bowel cancer today. It's not known exactly what causes bowel cancer, but there's a number of things that scientists look at. Age, almost nine in 10 cases of bowel cancer occurred in people over 60. That's changing now. Diet, of course, if you eat a lot of red meat, processed meats, low fiber, that increases your risk. Weight, bowel cancer is more common in overweight people. I used to be fat, so I can say the F word on the radio. Exercise, inactivity can cause problems. Alcohol and smoking, 
High alcohol intake and smoking can increase your risk of getting bowel cancer. Couple of symptoms. If you have blood in your stools, absolutely positively get that checked. Changes in bowel habit, such as more frequent. Suddenly you have chronic diarrhea. Big issue. Looser stools, abdominal pain. So these are issues that this new generation are facing and it becomes a problem. Young diagnoses of this are increasing and the more young people are engaging in lifestyle habits that increase their risk, the worse it's going to get. This I know. So I want to talk today, as I said, 10 minutes ago, making the transition to a healthier lifestyle. And it's not hard. I'll, keep, I'll say that a thousand times to you because everyone thinks I could never do that. I could never be like you, Dr. Joe. Why not? I'm not doing anything that's magical or mystical or special powers. I'm not an Olympic athlete. And a lot of healthcare, when it comes to nutrition, is passive, not active. What does that mean? You have to not do something. You have to not put the bad foods in your body, what I call the seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. If you do put those things in your body, you need to do it the right way. So I'm going to give you options. I always joke, what do girls like? Girl, I, I, I joke around uh, with, with younger kids. I say, what do you like? You like presents, right? Okay, good. Well, here's a present. <gasps> I love that. Thank you. And also I joke that girls like options. And so do boys, by the way. So we want to give you options so that you can make better decisions. And when you have options, then you can decide this is going to be best for me. So a couple of diseases, just a couple, that are linked directly to nutrition. Ready? I'll try. I don't know if I can do this in one breath here. Heart disease, cancer, osteoporosis of the bones and the teeth, obesity, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, allergies, digestive problems, fatigue, mental disorders, depression, mood swings, mental alertness, sleep disorders. Couldn't do it in one breath. Skin conditions, wrinkles, pimples, blackheads, stress. Anybody fall into those categories? Say yes. Okay, good. Of course you do. We're human. We have these problems. But the good news is you don't have to succumb to them. You can fix them. So what I want you to do, a couple of things as we start making the transition. Boy, that was a long introduction, wasn't it? 12 minutes and 23 seconds. I want you to start thinking about your eating habits. Do you eat when you're hungry or do you eat when you have cravings? There's a big difference. If you're hungry, that means your body's hungry. You might start feeling a little weak or, you know, the brain starts getting a little foggy. You know, I need some nutrients. I got to get my blood sugar back up. I got to get my nutrient level back up. And so I'm going to eat something. A craving is when you're not hungry, but you say, man, I could go for a blank. It's usually one of the seven deadly sins. Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, or artificial sweetener. So if you're craving food, that doesn't mean you're hungry and you need to stop. And when you stop, you need to say, okay, am I really hungry or do I really just want ice cream or cookies or cake or a hamburger or a drink? That's a biggie. We're going to cover that a little bit later if we have time. People will say, I am so stressed out. I just have to go home and have a glass of wine at night. How many people do that? Raise your hands. A lot of you, right? I know you do. I know a lot of people personally who do that. And the wine may help you relax, but the wine is going to affect how you sleep. It's not going to let you go into a deep sleep. And the more you drink, the worse it is. So then you don't sleep enough. Then we get stressed out. So many times your cravings are when you're stressed out and you want to eat something that's going to stimulate those dopamine receptor sites in your brain and baby, you're going to get high. You're going to get high from that sugar. Dopamine's getting released. You go, ooh, I want more. More, more, more. You want more. Gloria Gaynor? Who did more, more, more? Anyway, um, I digress. I used to work in a, a vending company and my job, no kidding, was to get to fill up jukeboxes. So I worked in a room, big room with a bunch of shelves on it, and it had 45s. Ask your father if you don't know what that is. 45s, alphabetical, alphabetical order, walls and walls of them. So somebody would own a bar or a restaurant, whatever, and they'd say to the, the driver, hey, listen, I need, uh, you know, I need a, whatever, Bruce Springsteen song, okay? And they'd come to me and say, Joe, we need Bruce Springsteen uh, 45 of whatever, okay, Born to Run. And I'd look and see if we had it. If we didn't have it, it was in New Jersey. We'd order it from a big warehouse in New York. I went there once. Oh, my gosh, it was amazing. Record. I don't know what they did with all these records now. And I'd give it to the driver and he'd put it in a jukebox. And sometimes I'd go on the routes and fill a jukebox too. But anyway, that's why I talk about music a lot, especially that era, because that's all I did all day for eight hours a day was pull records. So. But I digress. Think about 
your eating habits. And is it a craving or is it hunger? And if it's a craving, you need to stop doing it. And it takes about three or four days to break the cravings. And what many times what you need to do is go exercise, walk around the house, walk around the building, drink more water, and the cravings will go away. As long as you recognize it, you have to realize you have a problem before you can do anything about it. So if you have a problem, just like they say in AA, admit you have a problem and then do something about it. So if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, arm pain, hand pain, wrist pain, these are problems. Number one, identify it. You know you have it. And then number two, what do you do about it? And what you do is you make an appointment to come see us. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge, and we would love to be your doctors. So give us a call. Go to my website. You can give us a call or do it right online, drjoeesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, and set up a time to come see us. Stop suffering needlessly. Again, the biggest complaint I get from patients is, why didn't I do that sooner? And my answer always is, I have no idea. You knew I was here. You knew my team of doctors were here. You knew we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We accept people with all insurances, no insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. I've never seen a car damaged ever where the occupants weren't. And I've seen thousands and thousands of car accident cases. So if your car was damaged, don't try to kid yourself and think you weren't hurt. You were. You need to come see us. Again, drjoeesposito.com, just Google Dr. Joe, and we will set you up a time as soon as humanly possible to get you in. So we're going to continue talking about making the transition to better nutrition. And when it comes to cravings, many times your body is depleted in nutrients. So one of the things that I do, and a lot of my patients do, and a lot of you do, is you take something called Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Now, these are two products. They're the minimum amount of nutrients your body needs every day. And the brain is able to work more efficiently when it has the proper fuel. Gee, just like any other machine. So if you're not taking Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, I strongly advise that you reconsider that decision and you get some. Relatively inexpensive for a scoop of each, that powders, a scoop of each is about $2 a day, a dollar each. Do it. Do it for a month and see what happens. I know I went to a, a, a medical clinic a while ago and I brought everybody there, a, a bottle of scoop, Super Greens and Essential Source. I went back a couple of weeks later. You would have thought that Rockstar walked in a room. Dr. Joe, Dr. Joe, oh my gosh, I've been taking it. My energy is up. Oh my gosh, Dr. Joe, I'm going to the bathroom better. Dr. Joe, I was sick. I took it for two days, stopped taking all my medications, and I healed so much faster than I usually do. Dr. Joe, I don't have my cravings anymore. It's just on and on and on and on. So do it. And it, don't take it one day. And go, oh my gosh, it's a miracle. Give it a few days. Watch what happens. Do it for a month. You can order it uh, on my website, drjoesposito.com, or you can get it on Amazon if you have an Amazon account. We have other supplements as well there. Um, we have a whole line of supplements, but these are the two that I think you should at least start with. So when you have the cravings, many times you're nutritionally uh, deprived and you need to get your nutrition back up. And that's a simple, easy, quick, inexpensive way to do it. So other things you can do as you make your transition. Do you use food as a reward? We talked about that with wine. I worked hard today and I'm going to have a drink because I deserve it. No, you don't. You deserve to get the body healthy so that you're better able to deal with the stress. There's essentially three types of major stresses, physical, chemical, and emotional. Physical is neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, arm pain, wrist pain, numbness, tingling. Well, that's usually easy to fix. It's usually a pinched nerve or a muscle spasm. My doctors and I are all trained to fix these things. We go in, we work the muscles, we put the bones back in place. And so pain-wise, it's usually an easy thing. It may take several visits, but it, you have to get to the cause of the problem. And depending how long the problem's been there will determine how quickly you heal. So step number one, get rid of the physical pain. The chemical pain, that's the bad food. You have control over that. Chemical stress, I should say. You have control over that. So the alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, you control what goes in your body. I had a patient come in the other day, and she came to me years ago, big emotional problems, uh, didn't keep her appointments, came back a few years later, Dr. Joe, when I was coming to see you, I was actually feeling like I was healing, and then I stopped coming in, and I'm, I'm a wreck. What can, what can you do for me? Let's start over again. Put her on a treatment plan, put her on a dietary program. She's actually listening this time. And she said, I, I don't know what to eat. I, I'm losing my mind. I don't know what to eat. Now, again, she's a bit of an emotional uh, issue here. And I said, I don't know where to go to go out to dinner. I said, pick a restaurant. 
She said, Mexican. I said, okay. Uh, you can get beans. You can get small amounts of rice, guacamole, pico de gallo, salsa. You can get veggie fajitas, just you know, fried up vegetables. And you can mix the beans and the guacamole and the pico de gallo all together if you wanted to and eat it, but without the wraps. Because the wraps are usually made with corn, which could be genetically modified corn. And either way, it's a lot of sugar because the corn converts into sugar. That's where they get high fructose corn syrup from, which is sugar. Uh, the chips, of course, are fried and, and it, it's in a hydrogenated oil. Uh, those are horrible for you when it comes to health. So what I do when I go to Mexican restaurants, I tell them, don't bring me the chips. Because if they're there, what do I do with them? I eat them. What do you do with them? You eat them. So I would stay away from that. And she said, she looked at me. She goes, oh, I could do that. And then she went to a couple of other restaurants. I gave her ideas. And she goes, I can do that. So it's not hard. It's easy. You just have to learn how. So eat, making better choices food-wise is going to be important. So don't use food, food as a reward. That's a really bad reward. A reward might be then I'm going to go work out. I'm going to go to a movie. I'm going to go ask that person I've been meaning to ask out on a date on a date. That's a fun one, isn't it? Finally get enough guts to go ask somebody you want out that you haven't asked out before. I've had a couple of people in my life that never asked me out. Years later, here we are, you know, high school reunions. They're like, why didn't you ever ask me out? I said, I didn't know you liked me. I had no idea. So maybe you'll have health enough that you can start making some better emotional decisions as well. If you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, that means your stomach may not be breaking proteins into amino acids. And amino acids become neurotransmitters in your brain. Neurotransmitters make your brain work. So if you have acid reflux or heartburn, you're not absorbing, chances are, you're not absorbing the amino acids properly, not producing the proper neurotransmitters, that's affecting your emotional state. So physical problems, pinched nerve, acid reflux, spasms in the colon, could cause health problems. If you're not digesting your food properly, that can cause health problems, which then can affect the emotional uh, stress that you have. So if we can fix, you and I together, if we can fix the physical and the chemical the emotional is a lot easier to deal with. And then you don't have to reward yourself with toxic rewards. You can make better decisions across the board. Every aspect of your life changes when you get the health back in line. So start thinking about that. You know, sometimes I'm sad I eat. It makes me feel good. Of course it makes you feel good. It stimulates those dopamine receptor sites. What happens long term though? You feel worse. What a day I had. I need my drink to calm down. Did you know that chamomile tea also calms you down? Did you know that ga uh, kava, can, kava kava can calm you down? St. John's wort can calm you down? Magnesium can calm you down? So many times when we're stressed out, now hey, listen, we've all been under stress that had nothing to do with the magnesium deficiency. But if you keep your body healthy, a lot of these stresses will get better. There's a song by Alan Parsons Projects. and one, it's, I want this played at my funeral, by the way, in case anybody gets, you know, if, I, if, if you outlive me. And the line from the song is, little words that tossed and threw me like autumn winds will blow right through me. It's called Old and Wise. Great song. And it's, 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 it's to a funeral march, actually. It's, a, it's about somebody saying, I'm dying and I'm looking at back of my life. And those little things that drove me crazy now just blow right through me. It doesn't matter anymore. And that's what's going to happen when you obtain and maintain good health, that a lot of the things that tossed and threw you, suddenly you're going to go, I can deal with that. That's not that big a deal. And you can make better decisions. And that helps you make better health decisions as well. So they feed off each other. Follow that? So making the transition to better nutrition, first of all, you have to recognize you have a problem and then start recognizing where the problems are and making better choices. At least add Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source to your diet. That's a quick, easy, inexpensive start to make the transition. And we come back, we're going to talk a lot more about things you can do to make the transition to better health and better nutrition. Now, if you want to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Get off your fanny, make the call. Because so many of you say, I've been meaning to come see you for two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years. I know you have. Make the transition to getting healthy by go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Make an appointment to come see us. We have offices, again, Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We accept people with all insurances, no insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. Stop suffering needlessly. If you have pain, it's lasted more than three days, 
chances are you need to come see us. Again, the website, drjoesposito.com. Don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We're going to be right back. Hey, folks, thanks for being here. I am Dr. Joe Esposito, and we're talking today about making the transition to better nutrition, the steps you need to take to get healthy. And I shouldn't even say better nutrition, better life. Because everything starts, every journey starts with the first step, right? How do you do it? And that's what we're talking about today. We're teaching you how to do that. And by the way, if you, I know a lot of you will listen and you don't get to hear the whole show. You're in your car, you're traveling, whatever it is, you got to be in an appointment. And great compliment you, you people give me all the time. Say, Dr. Joe, I was going to an appointment and your show was on and I actually just sat in my car. And I didn't go into my appointment or I didn't go to whatever I was going to do. I had to listen to the end of it. But the good news is if you do have that opportunity that where you have to walk away from the show, we archive all of my shows. We'll call it a podcast. How about that? We'll call it something fancy, a podcast. And you can go to my website, drjoesposito.com or just Google Dr. Joe. Hunt thou- I think over a thousand hours now of radio shows are archived there. And it's on a YouTube channel. And we also videotape a lot of my lectures. So if you want to see some live stuff, which is pretty cool, because I show you things I can't show you on the radio, go to my website, drjoesposito.com. Just Google Dr. Joe. We come up first. And you can watch videos as well. And it's a great opportunity for you to start learning. I was at a dinner the other night, and uh, it was a bunch of vegetarians. And one gal there is kind of new to the world, and she was kind of trying to feel out what to do. And somebody at the table said, well, you're sitting next to Dr. Joe. And she said, who, who, who are you? I had no idea. And they said, I didn't have to speak. It was great. The other people at the table were like, oh, my gosh, you don't listen to his podcasts? You need to listen to his podcasts. So she went home, uh, I guess, and started listening to the podcast. And I got an email from her a couple of days later, and she said, oh, my gosh, this is – this is exactly what I needed. I need step-by-step, step, what do I do to get well and stay well? And so those are on my website for you, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, drjoesposito.com. By the way, right on the front homepage, right there, sign up for my newsletter. We send out lots of good information. I tell you where I'm going to be speaking. If you can come out to the live events, uh, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, um, because we send out a lot of good information there as well. So you don't want to be out of the loop, folks. You want to be cool. You want to be like the cool kids. And follow us, listen to the videos, uh, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that whenever something comes out, you can get a little boop, a little reminder that a new video is out. It's real simple. It's free. Can't get that stuff anywhere else. And it's free. So we're talking about making the transition to better nutrition. A couple of things you need to do. Uh, well, we'll back, back to the emotional stuff real quick. Food is a crutch. I can't start my day without my cup of coffee. A lot of people say that. I understand that. I don't drink coffee. I can understand it. So what you want to do then is drink a lot of water. Most of you are dehydrated. And many times you're tired because you're dehydrated and you just need to rehydrate. So 8, 10, 12 glasses of water a day, see what happens. I think you'll be thrilled. If you're going to do coffee, please do organic. Because coffee is sprayed with a lot of chemicals and some people have reactions not to the coffee but to the chemicals. So just drink organic. Problem solved. Decaf organic, even a better choice. Food is punishment. I'm too heavy. Who cares at this point? doesn't matter if I eat another hamburger, if I need another French fry. It doesn't matter. Look at the size of me. Or my life stinks. Or who's going to want me anyway? You ever have those thoughts? Most of us have at some point in our lives. And so using food as a punishment is not a good idea either. And when you start getting healthy, you'll realize that you're using food as a punishment. So a couple of things you need to do to make the transition. Number one, get the bad food out of the house. This is the biggest thing, biggest tip I can give you for making your transition to better health. If it's in the house, you're going to eat it. If it's not in the house, you're too lazy to go out and get the bad food, so you're not going to eat it. I'm a vegan. I've been a vegan for about 30, 31, 32 years now. One of the reasons I became vegan, and there's many, but one of the reasons is a lot of bad food has animal products in it, eggs or dairy. And so because I don't eat animal products, I can't eat those foods. So part of the reason I went vegan is to play a little head game with myself. Man, I really want those cookies. Oh, they have butter in them. I can't eat them. And so it helps me because I don't struggle with food every day like I used to. I struggle with food every meal like I used to. Every meal, I think, gosh, I really could go for a hamburger, gosh. And it's been 33, 32 years, whatever. It's still an issue. Because they say once you're an alcoholic, you're always an alcoholic. I guess once you're a food addict, you're always a food addict. And so I just have to make better decisions on a minute-to-minute basis. And it's a lot of fun. Oh, by the way, 
you'll save so much money by doing this. Because the healthier food is the cheap food. And you'll be amazed at the end of the week. I have many people say half my food budget I have at the end of the week that I used to spend. This is insane. And I said, good, now go take that money and go do something fun. Go enjoy life. Go uh, buy Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, which are really inexpensive anyway. You know, call, go, go, call my office and we'll set up a nutrition plan for you. We can do that over the phone if we need to. I'd rather do it in person if we can, but I know this show's all over the, all over the world. We can always do it on, on, over the phone or on Skype. And let's put together plans for you, specifically for you. And you're still going to have money left over. So that's one of the many, many benefits of being healthy. And you can live longer and you work harder. You make more money. And so it's a, a lot of fun. No downside to, to getting healthy. Don't shop when you're hungry. Anybody do that like me? Shop when you're hungry? Well, I've been pretty good lately, so I'm going to get fill in the blank. Potato chips, cookies, cakes, donuts, ice cream, breads. Don't do it. You can't. You're not, you're not strong enough. You don't have the superpowers of people that can go shopping hungry and just eat and just order fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seed, seeds. Good rule. Look at a, a product. Read the ingredients. If you can't pronounce one of the ingredients, don't eat it. Better yet, order things, or buy things that don't have ingredients listed on them, like fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. If you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. Clean out your house. Clean out your pantry. Clean out your freezer. Don't pull this one. I love this one. People say, well, Dr. Joe, as soon as I empty out my pantry, as soon as I finish the junk I have in my freezer, I'm going to start this program. No, you're not. You're lying to me and you're lying to yourself. you got to make the move. Clean the stuff out. I always think, I live my life as, what would happen if I were to die today? Would somebody easily go through my stuff and clean it out? And my answer has to be yes. And if not, I, I need to do more house cleaning. Uh, my closet, if I buy something new, I throw something old out. I have enough stuff. You have enough stuff. You don't need more stuff. So unless something really moves you, or moves me, I don't buy it. And if it does, my rule is I got to get rid of something. So I live a, a minimalistic life. And I just like it. It's a lot more fun. Easy to clean too, by the way. I have one of those robot vacuums. Oh, love that thing. I really need to do endorsements for them. I just love my robot vacuums. Push the button, come home, dump out the dirt, recharge it, do it again. Stuff some, and I have hardwoods throughout my whole house. I don't have a tile. I don't have any carpet. So, Become knowledgeable. This is the key here. Become knowledgeable about health. This is why we have 100, probably 1,000 plus hours of radio shows and videos on my website. And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. Sign up for my newsletter. We never give your information out, so don't worry about that. And get information. Now, I know you're not going to have time to watch every one or listen to every one. But when you have time, I want to make this part of your life. And if you go out for a hike, you have cell phones now, folks. Go to my website. Start listening. And you'll learn so much. And the more you know, the better you are at it. And there's tons of information out there. And it's all there. And guess what? I don't even charge you for it. It's free. So let's get started. We have to cut out the alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener to seven deadly sins. And on my website, by the way, I have a lecture called The Seven Deadly Sins of Nutrition. If you need a starting point, watch that one first. And then take the other ones as well. Because that's the basics. Got to start out in, a, you know, Dr. Joe 101. And then build from there. So all on the website, drjoesposito.com or... You can always just go to YouTube and look me up, but go to the website and go through the website. It makes my website get more hits. It makes it look good. So do that. Start watching. Start learning. So what do you eat? All right. Fruits and vegetables. Best choice. Dr. Joe, I don't know what to eat. What should I eat? What do you eat, Dr. Joe? I hear it every day. Breakfast, I start out with Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Add a little bit of coconut milk because I, I don't do dairy products. Shake it up. Drink it. If you want to get really crazy, add some cinnamon to it. Cinnamon stabilizes your blood sugar. Great antioxidant. And uh, you want to add beet powder to it. Beet powder is, has nitrates in it. Converts into nitric oxide. Opens up your blood vessels. And by the way, we have a product now that is a nitric oxide product that opens up blood vessels. And I give that to people. As we get older, um, men and women sometimes don't function as well as they used to, brain-wise and otherwise. It's a family show. I'll keep it clean. So taking that opens up your blood vessels and things get pretty good. So it's kind of cool. Uh, vitamin D is important. So I take my supplements first thing in the morning. I take vitamin D in the winter. I take about 5,000 international units. If you're in the middle of cold or flu season, I take about 10,000 or 15,000 IUs, international units of vitamin D. Uh, I take an adrenal supplement every day. 
because as we get older, our adrenals get weak. I take an omega-3 fatty acid supplement. We do uh, algae oil, and we do that as well. So those are the core supplements that I take, and I, probably that's a good start for you too. Super Green's an essential source. All right, start my day, blah, 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 go shower, shave if I need to. I don't like shaving, but if I, I have to, you know, got to look nice. Um, then sometimes I'll grab a piece of fruit or two, head to work or head to the studio or whatever I'm going to do. At that point, I get hungry right around 10 o'clock. Right around 10 o'clock, I'll have maybe have some nuts, uh, maybe a salad. Um, uh, those are my two main ones. Usually some nuts or salad or nut butter. Some people say, well, I have diverticulitis and I can't eat nuts and... Try nut butters, almond butter, cashew butter. Don't do peanut butter. It has mycotoxins in it, which can cause allergic reactions. Um, I'm not a big fan of peanuts. Um, but almond, walnut, pistachio, but whatever you want. And that usually holds me over to lunch. Lunch, I try to do a salad somewhere in there, at least one salad a day. And a salad might be at my snack. Salad might be for lunch. And, and shake it up with your salad. You know, I, I was joking with one of my staff members the other day. She didn't get my joke. Uh, she came in. I was eating a salad. And she said, Dr. Joe, what are you eating? And I said, oh, it's a honeymoon salad. She said, a honeymoon salad? I said, yeah, lettuce alone. And she looked at me. And I said, lettuce alone or lettuce alone. Oh, didn't get it. But anyway, I hope that joke wasn't wasted on you. <laughs> I think it's funny. But shake up your salad. Throw in some tomatoes if you need to. Throw in some chickpeas. Throw in some uh, sunflower seeds. Use nutritional yeast. If you've never used nutritional yeast, it's a powder. It looks like... Um, powdered mashed potatoes, and tastes great. Really savory, rich flavor. And um, that's a, oh, okay. My computer just made noise there. Um, it's a great thing to add to your food because it has something in it called beta-glucan. Beta-glucan, it's also found in mushrooms, stimulate your digestive, uh, your immune system and can act to help decrease, reduce your colds and flu, or it can actually, if you get them, reduce the uh, severity and the symptoms. So nutritional yeast is great. Oatmeal is very good too. And oatmeal is another thing if you need a snack. Just take some old-fashioned organic oats and you don't have to cook them. They're already cooked. I add some raisins to it, a little coconut milk. Eat it like a cold cereal. Add some cinnamon if you want to, again, to stabilize the blood sugar. Awesome. Then dinner varies. It depends where I'm going, what I'm doing. You know, if I'm going out with friends, if I have a date, if I'm going to go home and cook my own meals. But I try to, I'm always vegan. And it's always cheaper when you order the plant-based choices. And try different restaurants. You know, of course, Chinese is easy. Indian has a lot of vegan foods. Ethiopian has some amazing vegan foods. If you don't have Ethiopian food, I strongly recommend you try it. It's so much fun. You eat with your hands. Um, they have a bread called injera bread, which is made with a grain called teff. Uh, it's gluten-free and just spectacular. I, just, I, I think if I had to pick a favorite uh, ethnic food, it's probably Ethiopian food. And I'm Italian. Hope my grandmother didn't hear that in heaven. Sorry, Grandma Esposito. I didn't mean nothing by that. Giuseppe, what are you doing? Why you know you eat Italian food? I like Italian food, Grandma. I'm just saying I like Ethiopian too. That's me talking to my grandmother. I'm sure she's in heaven. She was an angel. So. Um, we talked about nuts. Try to stay away from a lot of gluten. You know, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. Those aren't really your best choices. Pretzels. And again, the sugar weakens the immune system, puts on fat. So I'd rather eat a whole food. What I mean by a whole food is something the way it was picked in nature. So start looking for whole food snacks. And if you don't know what to eat, go to my website, drjoesposito.com, and under my uh, videos or audio, I think they're under, it's under Dr. Joe's, I guess, videos, yeah. I did a lecture called, So What Can I Eat? And you could listen to that lecture. A lot of fun. Talk about breakfast, lunches, dinner, snacks, uh, parties, raising kids, Christmas. It's all in there. And guess what? The cost for that. That amazing lecture is my gift to you. It's no charge. Why do I do all this? Because I want to get you well and keep you well. I know that if you have a normally functioning nervous system, a normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition, you have the opportunity to obtain and maintain the best health that you possibly can. And I've had a lot of consultants tell me, you should be charging for this. Your website is one of the most popular websites on, on the internet. Why aren't people, why don't you charge people for it? Because I want to give this to you my gift to you. It's my give back. When I went to college, we were taught give for the sake of giving, love for the sake of loving, and serve for the sake of serving with no expected reward. And you'll get rewards. And but guess what? It works. So go to website. You can order Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, the other supplements we have there. Um, if you want to have questions, if you have questions, send them to me through the website. Listen to the uh, audios, watch the videos, read the articles. It's a real good source of information. 
And it's a reason why we, this show is heard coast to coast and around the world, because this is health care that really, really works. So get the nervous system working, get the digestive system working, drink water, eight to 10 glasses of pure water a day. That's important to help make your transition. It's going to clean out your system, cut out the dairy products, cut out the wheat. And guess what? There's tons of things you can eat. If you don't like water, how about seltzer? Seltzer, but here's trivia fact, club soda has salt in it. Seltzer doesn't. That's the difference. So doing seltzer is fine. It's a little acidic. Uh, that's why if you have a stain, you can put seltzer on a stain. It'll dissolve the stain. But again, if that's your biggest sin and I can get you drinking fluids, I'm willing to do it for you. So folks, if you want to make an appointment, come see us. And you need to. I know that you and or everyone you know are suffering from healthcare problems. No one is immune to healthcare problems, myself included. So why not get to the cause of the problem and resolve it? Life's a whole lot more fun when you're healthy. So go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world, and we will set you up a time to come see us. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge, and we want to be your doctors. We want to get you well and keep you well. We accept people with all insurances, no insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. You can't afford not to get well. That's going to be my new catchphrase, I think. You can't afford not to get well. Because inevitably, people come in, major, major majority of people do what we say. Some don't. Well, Dr. Joe, I can't afford it. No, you can't afford not to. And eventually, they come back in saying you were right. Because of this, I missed so much work. I did this. It affected my family, my love life, my uh, my church, my, my boyfriend's girlfriend's uh, husband's wives. And I realized the toll that it took, not only financially, emotionally, socially. And you're right, Dr. Joe. This is the best value by far that you could ever find not just in healthcare but anywhere if you have your health you have everything so go to the website right now drjoesposito.com or just google dr joe and we will see you very soon at our offices so other things you need to do to make the transition like i said breakfast fruit dr joe super greens lunches another thing is not just what you eat it's when you eat give yourself at least four hours between meals because if you're going four hours between meals, the food is digesting from your stomach, passing into your small intestine. Then you can put new food in your stomach. If you put food on top of food on top of food, the stomach's saying, okay, I'm going to digest, uh, I don't know, this oatmeal. And it's digesting in. It's about halfway there. Oh, here comes some more food. Now the stomach says, now do I digest this ham sandwich or do I finish digesting the oatmeal? I don't know what to do. So it kind of does a... Uh, a half hearty, I won't say the word I'm thinking, uh, half, half, uh, halfway, there you go, keep it clean, a halfway job uh, cl digesting the oatmeal and the ham sandwich. And then guess what? Then you throw uh, some French fries on there two hours later. Uh-oh, now what do I do? The ham sandwich takes about six hours to digest because it's a heavy protein, and the French fries take about two hours, and the fruit takes about 20 minutes. I don't know what to do. And so nothing really gets digested as well as it should. So make sure your stomach is empty before you put new stuff in there. And that's going to help make your transition to better nutrition. Eat slowly. Remember, it takes 20 minutes to get the message from your stomach to your brain. Your stomach produces a hormone called leptin. Leptin is released into the blood, goes into the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus senses the leptin and tells you that you're full. If you're constantly throwing food down, the stomach doesn't have a chance to go through its natural cycle of producing leptin and getting it to the hypothalamus, or it produces too much leptin, and the hypothalamus is overwhelmed and you, you become leptin-resistant. What does that mean? Your body's had so much leptin, it doesn't even listen to the leptin anymore. And so it's overwhelming the body. Following? So get the body healthy by spacing out your meals as well. And again, it takes 20 minutes to get the message from your stomach to your brain. So if you're ravenous, don't eat for 20 minutes, have a snack, wait 20 minutes, then eat. A couple of handfuls of nuts, almond butter, cashew butter, pistachios, walnuts, Give yourself 20 minutes, notice how you feel, and you'll be amazed how much less food you eat. And then you can make better decisions, which helps you make the transition to better nutrition, which is the title of today's show. See how easy that is? So these are a lot of things. I'm throwing a lot out at you. So you want to go to my website, drjoesposito.com, and listen to these shows. And listen, this is my rule. It takes you 11 times to memorize something. So whether it's my shows or whether it's a song or whether it's somebody's address or a phone number, we don't do that anymore. We have cell phones that memorize for us. 11 times. So listen to a show. Listen to it a few times. Price is right. I don't charge you for it. 
And every time you listen, you're going to learn something new. That's why I tell people when I give them the, my CDs, when they come in as patients, I give them the seven deadly sins of nutrition and so what can I eat? I give those as presents to my patients. And I'll say, listen to them 11 times. And at least they'll listen to them sometimes. And every time you do it, you're going to learn something new. It's not hard. It's easy. Got to keep the body in motion. Got to move. When I do radio shows, I stand up. I park and walk. I take the stairs. I don't like going to the gym. I'll be honest with you. I broke my back years ago. I have a fracture in my low back, a fracture in my neck. And so when I work out really hard, I hurt. And so I get adjusted and it helps, but I have some structural uh, integrity issues that need to be addressed. So I like to walk. So at lunch, I, near one of my offices, we have this beautiful park right next to my office uh, and it's right next to Life University. And it's a big campus. It's where I went to school, actually. And I'll go walk the trails. They have trails back there and rugby fields. And it's great. 20 minutes. Just get out. Fresh air. Walk around. It's amazing how that reboots your body and gets you feeling good. Take the ele- uh, stairs instead of the elevator. Again, park far away and walk. Think of reasons you can work out. And cleaning house is a great workout. You squat, you bend, you twist. So cleaning house is a good thing to do. If you're done with your house, you can come clean my house. How cool is that? See? But get out there and move. That's really important to making a transition. And then sleep is really important too. If you're not getting enough rest, the body can't heal. The body heals when you sleep. So temperature, 68 to 72 degrees. Some people sleep better with socks. Some people sleep better without socks. Decide what works best for you. Make sure you have a good pillow. Make sure your head isn't jacked up because that throws your neck out of place. And as a chiropractor, I'm very worried about your spine. So we have pillows we have here in the office that many times we get to the patient's And that helps put their curve back into the neck and create normal structure. Make sure it's dark. If you can't, I have blackout shades in my bedroom. If you can't put blackout shades out, at least get a little mask. They cost about three, four dollars at a drugstore. Keep it dark. Because as soon as light comes, even through your closed lids, it it starts to shut down your production of melatonin, which is the hormone that helps you sleep. And then, then cortisol raises in the morning. Cortisol levels start going up and that wakes you up. So keep it dark. Keep it quiet. Maybe you have to wear earplugs. You can wear earplugs. I don't care. But quiet, dark, comfortable temperature, those are really going to be the keys. And a good pillow are going to be the keys to getting a good night's sleep. And if you are having trouble sleeping, be careful when you eat. Try to give yourself at least three or four hours from the time you ate to the time you go to bed because it takes energy to digest food. Stay away from caffeine. And some people, as you get older, I'll raise my hand to this one, if you drink too much, you got to get up and pee. So what I do is I drink all my fluids before about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And then after that, I don't have to wake up and pee. Because that's annoying, isn't it? Uh, you're laying in bed. Oh, maybe it'll go away. It's not going to go away. It's in your bladder. It's got to come out. So get up, pee, get back to bed again. Or don't put yourself in that position. That's something else I've learned in life. Don't put yourself in uncomfortable positions. Don't put yourself in a place where you can get in trouble. My mother was right. Oh, God, I hate to say that. Mom, if you're listening, you were right. You know, nothing good happens after midnight, she, you know, is, is an old phrase, or after 11 o'clock. Um, and it's true. You only get in trouble. So try to avoid those uncomfortable positions and don't, don't do things that you don't want to do um, if it's not going to make you happy. But again, the limits to that, of course. Don't argue with me on that one. So here's a trick I want you to do as we start to wrap it up here. List, go to my website, drjoesposito.com. Under patient forms, you'll see something called a diet diary. Print it up, it's free. And start writing down everything you eat. And you will be amazed because you think you're eating well. And patients say it all the time. And then they hand in their diet diary to me and say, Dr. Joe, this wasn't a good week. And I laugh and I say, I've been doing this for over three decades. No one's ever had a good week. So when you start writing down what you eat, you'll be amazed what you're eating. And you'll say, wow, Dr. Joe was right. I got to avoid these seven deadly sins. At least take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Please, folks, that's the easiest, quickest, first step you can take. And those are on my website, drjoesposito.com, along with all my other stuff, my books. If you haven't read my books, read my books. Um, also available on Amazon. So if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, make the move. Start making the transition to better nutrition. And if you want to make an appointment to come see us, because it's time you did, I know it is. Go to my website, drjoesposito.com. You can give us a call. You can book it right online. We accept people with all insurances, no insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. Once again, I've never seen a car accident where the car was damaged where the occupants weren't, ever. So you need to make that decision that you want to get healthy. 
And believe me, it's the best investment you'll ever make ever in your entire life. I don't care what the stock market does. This is the best investment you'll ever make is getting yourself healthy. So the website again to order supplements, books. If you have questions, listen to audios, videos, drjoesposito.com or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. Hey folks, thanks for listening. Thanks for telling your friends. We'll catch you next time.